The second special case of a terminated transmission line that I'd like to look at next is what happens when we short the, the T line. So here we've got a transmission line. Its output terminals have been connected with an ideal piece of wire, meaning that the resistance between the output terminals of the transmission line at the load end is equal to uh, zero ohms. In this um, in this state, in this condition, we can make two observations, one about the voltage and the current, and the first is that the voltage measured across the output terminals of the transmission line has to be equal zero volts. You can't drop any voltage across a short. The second is, is compared to other loads that could be connected to the output ends of the transmission line, we'll get the most current flow under the short circuit condition. So we don't know what that value is going to be yet, but we can just make the observation that, that the load current under a short circuit is going to be the maximum of any possible current that would be flowing um, when different loads are connected across the output ends of the transmission line. So our task next is to figure out, well, what does this... Um, termination on the load end of the transmission line, what does it do to the voltage and current along the length of the transmission line? And we get some interesting results. So to analyze that, the first thing I'm going to do is just write the uh, wave equations in phasor form again. And so that's the voltage along the length of the transmission line, uh, considering both the incident wave and the reflected wave is going to be equal to whatever the amplitude and phase shift of the incident wave is times the the cosine portion, the sinusoidal portion of that uh, incident wave. And then we've got whatever the magnitude and angle of the reflected wave are, V bar minus, and we multiply that by its um, reflection coefficient, or its uh, sinusoidal portion, J beta Z. And you can see that I've done this just for the special case of the, the lossless uh, transmission line where alpha is equal to zero in the numerator of both the forward and a traveling wave exponential terms. So, uh, you know, a lot of times we'll reduce this by using the relationship that V bar, um, sorry, V bar minus the amplitude of the reflected, the amplitude and phase of the reflected wave is equal to uh, V bar plus whatever the incident wave was times this reflection coefficient at the load. So a lot of times we'll plug that into this equation and we will write the wave equation uh, for the voltage as V of Z is equal to V bar plus times E to the minus J beta Z plus the reflection coefficient at the load E to the J beta Z. So this is a general case. It applies to all transmission lines that are lossless. And what I want to do now is apply it to the case where we have a short circuit at the transmission line. So for a short circuit, uh, the reflection coefficient at the load can be found from our equation ZL minus Z0 over ZL plus Z0. And that gives us the load resistance was 0. So that's 0 minus Z0 over 0 plus Z0. So that's equal to minus 1, which another way to write that is 1. Uh, magnitude of 1 at an angle of 180 degrees phase shift, which is the same as saying magnitude of 1 at an angle of pi radians of phase shift. So if we were to plug that into this result, that would give us the voltage along the transmission line for a short circuit. So let's do that. V bar of Z is equal to V bar plus times E to the minus J beta Z. And now what we need to do is plug this in for the reflection coefficient. 1 angle pi, e to ej beta z. So that's the special case there. And um, a lot of math will get us to the point that um, basically what has happened in the case of the short circuit is that we've We've reflected all of the waveform. That's the magnitude of one. We've also introduced this 180 degrees of, of phase shift there in the voltage waveform. And so basically what's happening there is at the load, we've got uh, the voltage waveform at sinusoidal. It comes in whatever its phase shift is at the load. It, all of it gets reflected, but in the opposite direction. And uh, a lot of math will show us that what we can find is that in the case of the, for the short circuit, the voltage along the transmission line, 
So V of Z for the short circuit, the magnitude of that voltage can be found from 2 times the magnitude of V bar plus times the uh, magnitude of sine of beta times whatever the length of the transmission line is. And uh, a, a lot of more math will also show us that the magnitude of the short circuit current along the length of the transmission line is equal to 2 times the magnitude of I bar plus times the magnitude of cosine of the wave number times the length of the transmission line. And um, so these are, these are pretty interesting results. The uh, magnitude due to this um, shift here, the magnitude of the, uh, the uh, voltage waveform along the length of the transmission line under the special case of the short circuit is going to be two times whatever the magnitude of the um, impeding voltage wave was, or the, the first forward voltage wave was, and then it's going to be sinusoidal. And something similar for current is going to exist, but we've got two times whatever the magnitude of the current forward current was times a cosine wave. And so over here, what I'd like to do is I'd like to plot that. So um, if we've got two times V plus, that's going to be the maximum amplitude. And remember, in this case, this is zero. So sine of zero is zero. So in, in sorry, this is D equals to zero. And uh, so we're looking at this, uh, plotting this equation right here, 2 V bar plus sine of beta D. So it's going to be a zero right here. And then at uh, lambda over 4, it's going to reach a maximum. And then at lambda over 2, it's going to meet reach a minimum. And then it would decay, but if we recall, this equation's got an uh, absolute value sign in it. And so that is just going to look like a rectified sine wave. So at lambda over 2, we're at 0. As we said, 3 lambda over 2, normally for a sine wave, we'd be down here at minus 1. But remember, we've got this rectified sine wave because the absolute value sign. So we're up here at lambda, we're at 0. At 5 lambda over 4, we're at a maximum again. So it looks like... this, where this is kind of my best representation of a rectified sinusoidal wave. So what we see here is that voltage is zero at the load, which is a necessary condition of the short circuit. And um, because, of that, because of the math that we showed down here, the voltage lambda over four distance from the load is actually two times V bar plus, the magnitude of V bar plus here. So um, along the transmission line, as we go back from the load towards the generator, we're going to see that the voltage will vary from 0 volts up to a maximum of 2 V bar plus, and it'll repeat that pattern every lambda over 2 along the length of the transmission line. And so we get these repeating patterns of voltage zeros and voltage maximums. A similar thing can be said from the current. We're plotting this one. Um, so it's a, it's a cosine function, which means the current at the load is going to be a maximum because cosine of zero is one. So from that equation, we see that the max value is just going to be two times whatever the amplitude of I bar plus is. And it's going to be this value at D is equal to, or at L, whatever you want to call it, is equal to zero. And then at lambda over four, it's going to go to zero and it's going to repeat itself over and over. So this guy is going to look like this. Where, and that's not a very well-drawn sine wave, but I think you get the idea. Where, where wherever there is a voltage minimum, there's a current maximum. So current at the load here under this condition is a maximum, which satisfies our special conditions for the short circuit. IL had to be its whatever its max value was, and we see that in this plot. So our kind of intuitive understanding of a short circuit still jives with our mathematical analysis of the short-circuited transmission line. So the next thing I want to do is plot uh, Zn, the uh, input impedance of the transmission line connected to the short circuit. So that's and what does the circuit see from that perspective, Zn? And uh, remember that Zn is the total ratio of voltage to current. So 
here what we've got is uh, at this point we've got zero divided by the, by whatever the max current is and so that's just going to give us a zero for the input um, impedance as we move towards lambda over four however what's going to happen is um, the voltage is going to increase into a into a maximum value while the current gets closer and closer and closer to zero so we're approaching a limit here because we've got 2v plus divided by a number that's getting um, increasingly closer to zero so that'd be like you know 2v plus divided by 0 0.00001 so what that is saying mathematically is the closer we get to lambda over four the input impedance is actually going to reach positive infinity and so we get this kind of asymptotic behavior at lambda over four for input impedance. It looks like this, where it is actually going to positive infinity. And what happens is that um, at every lambda over two, we'll get an input impedance of zero. And then we'll get this asymptotic behavior that also repeats lambda over two wavelengths. And it looks like this. Just keeps repeating itself and it turns out that from just dividing the voltage by the current here we can see that we get this um, this uh, asymptotic behavior where over the range lambda over four to uh, three lambda over four the input impedance takes on all positive uh, all possible values from negative infinity to infinity and so that's an interesting behavior uh, and I draw these because I think that allows you to visualize the fact that a short-circuited transmission line, as we'll see in a second, will appear as a purely reactive element. But the interesting thing is, is that you can make it appear as any value of reactance as you want just by picking the length of the transmission line. So um, we, you know, to calculate what this value is at any known distance we just need to do a little bit of math and that is that the input impedance is equal to z0 times um, zl plus j z0 tan of beta l so you should recognize this it's the equation for input impedance of a, a lossless transmission line z0 plus j zl tan beta l so if i just plug in zero for the load resistance here we will see that uh, what happens is we're left with we're left with um, this z0 term here this term here uh, oh sorry that doesn't go to zero this goes to zero and this term here so we're left with basically uh, j z0 squared tan of beta L that's really hard to read <laughs> J times Z0 squared tan beta L over Z0 which is just equal to J Z0 tan of beta L and that's the input impedance for short circuit so that jives with what we plotted here which is actually a plot of the tangent function um, for uh, beta times the length of the transmission line and what's in, what's interesting here is that the transmission line it has a J in front of it and so uh, we take whatever the characteristic impedance of the T line is we multiply it by J and then tangent of beta L and that means we can create any value of X sub L or any value of X sub C we can make a transmission line look like a purely reactive element and we can make it look like any inductor we want or any capacitor we want just by adjusting the length of the the transmission line that we short so it we'll see later that this is a very very um, often utilized uh, property of a short-circuited transmission line